Welcome to the next video uh, in our series on excavation support system design. Uh, right now in this video what we're going to be talking about are force analyses within sheet pile walls. Uh, we have another video on uh, dealing with the at rest condition which is typical for reinforced concrete walls. Uh, but when we're dealing with a sheet pile wall or any other cantilever wall, such as a secant pile wall, or even a contigi contiguous board pile, or soldier piles and lagging, uh, we must analyze forces as if this is a, uh, a cantilever in equilibrium. Um, our learning, learning objectives today are to uh, compute the active and passive pressures on a cantilever ex excavation support system. Uh, we're going to do this again by looking at a balance between a PowerPoint tutorial and uh, doing some, some of the work out on hand with an example problem. Pull that up again so that you can see it. Um, this is our example problem that we're going to work through as we go through this conceptually. Uh, what we know is we have soil uh, with specific properties, uh, unit weight of 120 PSF, uh, friction angle of 30 degrees. Our active pressure uh, coefficient uh, Ka is 0.33, and our passive pressure coefficient is going to be 3.0. Um, as we talked about in a previous video, uh, the active earth pressure is when we allow that uh, soil to uh, relax slightly, which is going to occur, occur on the retained side, uh, the retained soil above the bottom of the excavation. Uh, and then our passive pressure is going to be the pressure, the soil pressure uh, that is exerted when we try to actually move against the soil and overcome the shear stresses. So in this problem, we have a depth, uh, uh, excavation depth of 10.5 feet. And what we really need to know is how deep do we need to drive this pile in this particular soil uh, in order for it to, uh, to support the soil uh, as a cantilever that is in equilibrium. And once we drive it that, to that depth, uh, are we sure that it's going to be adequate to support the uh, loads that it is going to be subjected to and the moments? So let's first get into uh, how to uh, do the force analysis in a sheet pile wall. So let's pull this up. We'll go step by step through this and we'll go step by step through the example problem. So this resource right here is going to talk about uh, you know how to set up your problem and how to go through this efficiently. The first step, uh, you're going to label this diagram. And I always suggest starting with labeling the diagram so that we are all talking about the same reference points. So the depth of the excavation is going to be H, which is already labeled on the previous diagram for you. Okay. We've got the depth of the wall, which is going to be D. If this moves quickly for you, you can always pause the video. Uh, we're also going to label the bottom of the excavation as B. That's going to be this line here, right at the bottom of our excavation at depth H. And then at the bottom of our pile, our total depth that we're going to drive the pile, we'll call that line J. Okay? So let's do that really quickly here together with our, uh, with our example problem. Uh, let's open up one note here. All right. So, in this problem, uh, we've got a area above the point of excavation. This is going to be our original condition. We've got our sheet pile wall, which is going to be driven to a certain depth, okay, that we don't know yet. And the depth of our excavation here, uh, let's hope this is more of a straight line, uh, it's going to be this point here. So, if we're going to label this, we're going to label this part here H, all right and H is going to be 10.5 feet. Uh, we know that we have the depth of our pile, and that's going to be D. All right. And then we have our reference point here. Sorry, that's a little messy. Our reference point here is going to be B. And at the bottom of our excavation, we're going to call that J. Okay. Uh, this just allows us to find, uh, you know, have some commonality in the way that we describe the problem. I will draw one more thing on my diagram that's not on that PowerPoint slide, and that is we know that there's going to be some point of rotation here, okay? Because what we're allowing this sheet pile wall to do is translate very slightly, okay, where we're going to have a little bit of motion to the right there in the bottom, and a little bit more motion up here on the 
uh, excavated side. So it's going to rotate very slightly. Now if I blow that up a little bit here, if I blow that point of rotation, if I'm looking at it here, this point right here, this is my point of rotation. What's happening, and I over-exaggerate it, is that the wall is going to be moving into the soil in this direction at the bottom, and then away from the soil uh, near the top or in the upper area. Okay, And that's going to be important later when uh, we actually do force balance. I'm trying to find the eraser function here on this pen, and it's not seeming to work, so please excuse that there. All right. So let's pull this PowerPoint back up. We'll go to our full slide here. Um, and let's rapid fire go through this. We've labeled our depth of our excavation. And now what we need to do is compute the active pressure at the plane B okay, on the retained side. So if I draw that out, what we need to know is the passive pressure, a uh, pass. Uh, the, sorry, the active pressure at point B on the retained side. Now we know this is going to be a triangular pressure dis distribution because we know that as we go down in our soil profile, we have additional weight, a linear increase in the weight of the soil above, and our Ka, our active uh, earth pressure coefficient, is going to help us translate that soil weight above that point into a horizontal earth pressure. So let's actually do that with our problem here. What I will do in my problem is I will erase this really quickly uh, just because I don't think it's going to add a whole lot of value to have that drawing there anymore other than conceptual. Right? So we need to know what P sub A is. That is the active pressure. We'll call it PA1, active pressure on the retained side. Now what we do is we say, all right, we have a unit weight. That's gamma times whatever that depth is, H. Okay, That's going to be our, this right here is going to be our weight above that point at H on the retained side. This is our vertical pressure. And then to convert that to a uh, horizontal earth pressure, we need to multiply it by Ka. So in this problem, that's actually very easy to solve for. We have 120 pounds per cubic foot. We're going to multiply that by 10.5 feet. And we're going to multiply that by a, an earth pressure coefficient here for the passive case of 0 0.33. And what we end up with in this problem, which should be quite easy to do, is 416 pounds per square foot. Uh, and that's our PA1. Okay. So let's hop back now to our PowerPoint and talk about what the next step is. Right. So once we've got the active earth pressure, we know that we can look at this what you're seeing here, we can look at this and say, all right, above the, the excavation at PA1, all right, we know we have active earth pressure. We're allowing that wall to rotate slightly, uh, let's see, counterclockwise. We don't have any passive pressure above that point because we're not moving into the soil anywhere above that point, all right? But once we get below the excavation, what we end up having is some passive pressure on the left-hand side, what we call the excavated side, and additional active pressure on the right-hand side. But before we get into that force balance, what we need to do is we need to compute all the active pressures and all the passive pressures at all of these reference points, B and J. So let's find PA2, okay, so that we can do these force balances later. PA2 is going to be the passive pressure of the active pressure, my apologies, at the plane J on the retained side. So in order to find that, uh, conceptually this actually is quite easy. What we need to do is find all of the weight above that point at J, okay? And we multiply that weight by Ka, our pressure, our passive or active pressure coefficient, all right? Now above point J at this at this plane J, we know we have 
H, which is the depth of the soil uh, down to the bottom of the excavation. And then we also have this depth of D, where we're going to be driving our pile. So this, if we replace H in this equation with H plus D because we have this additional weight there. Another way to write this would be P, for, your, for your active pressure on the retained side is to, call, is to say PA1 plus gamma D KA will also provide you with the same value. Okay? So let's go to our problem here and we'll solve for PA2. So we'll scroll down slightly here. And now we're going to solve for PA2. And that's going to be equal to gamma times H plus D times K sub A. And again, that's equal to gamma H K A plus gamma D K A where gamma h is the weight above point h and gamma d is the vertical weight above uh, for that whole depth above and h plus d is going to be those two combined we simply replace this with our 120 pounds per cubic foot 10.5 make sure that looks like a 10 not a 16 All right, this is going to be 10.5 plus D, we don't know what D is, and times our Ka, which is 0.33. And if we simplify that a little bit, uh, we end up with 39.6 uh, D plus 416. Now, all of these pressures, PA1, PA2, they're going to be in pounds per square foot. I tend to leave my units out sometimes only because uh, these problems become very messy if we try to include our units all the way across. So if we always know that our PA1 and PA2 and what we're going to see PE and PJ later, uh, as long as we recognize that these values are pounds per square foot, uh, we're going to be good. So let's pop up our, our PowerPoint again here. And we're going to move a little bit more quickly now that we understand how we're doing this. We're always taking the vertical weight above a point and then translating that either using the passive or the active pressure depending on which one it is. So let's pull up our PowerPoint uh, and we will move on to the next pressure. Now. We've computed active pressures, but as we mentioned, below the point of the excavation, there is a passive pressure on the retained side, which means that if we tried to rotate that pile into the soil, uh, if we tried to push that pile into the soil, uh, to the right-hand side of what you're seeing now, that soil would resist our motion. Okay, It would not want to us to move against it, and in order for us to actually create movement, we'd have to overcome the shear stress. So we know that that is a very high force, okay, or very high pressure. Now, if we want to compute the passive pressure on the retained side at J, all we need to do is find the vertical weight above point J and multiply it by the passive pressure coefficient. Now, this should look very similar to what we just computed for PA2, which is shown here uh, in the left-hand side at the bottom of J, at J. All we're doing is replacing it uh, Ka with Kp because we're dealing with the passive pressure. All right. So let's go to our notebook. Compute this very quickly. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we'll do this over here to the left. Let's compute. Uh, this is the passive. Call this passive at J. You know, it's at the retained side. We don't have necessarily a, uh, an abbreviation for that, so uh, we'll just label it as such. And we know that that's going to be the weight of the soil above point J, which is going to be gamma H plus D, just multiplied by Kp. And if we do that out, we end up with 120 times 10.5 plus D. And instead of 0.33 for our, acti for our active that we used over here, we're going to use the 3.0 value that we are given uh, up above here in our problem in our soil properties. Okay, you should be able to see that here. All right, that value ends up becoming uh, 
excuse me, make sure I got my calculations right here. Uh, what we're going to end up having uh, for our passive pressure of the retained side is 360D plus 3780. And again, that's PSF. All of these pressures are in pounds per square foot. Now let's move a little bit more quickly here. We'll pull this up. We've dealt with the retained side. Now what we're going to have to do is deal with the excavated side, all right? Where we need to now know the active pressure J at the excavated side. That's going to be this value here. And the passive pressure on the excavated side, which is going to be gamma D KP. Now again, because we don't have this soil weight above the point H, we've excavated that, that, all that soil weight away, we no longer have to worry about H. Uh, that force is going to be the atmospheric pressure, and we're going to consider that to be constant, uh, constant at zero in these problems, or part of our equilibrium. Uh, so all we need to consider is gamma D, that's our weight, and then the active pressure is going to be translated by the Ka, and the passive pressure by Kp. So let's do those out here in our notebook. And let me this open. So we have our active, we'll call it excavated side at J, and this is going to be, so that's going to be at J, and so that will be equal to, we said gamma, gamma times D times Ka, which is 120, times this value D that we do not know, times 0. Point 0.33, okay, and that's going to simply be 36.9, uh, 36.9 times D, and then we have the passive uh, at J excavated on the excavated side, and that's going to be equal to gamma D times Kp, because we're dealing with the passive pressure, which is 120 times D times 3.0, and that's going to give us a value of 360 times D. Now what you'll notice here is we have an unknown. We're expressing these in terms of unknowns, all right? Uh, and right now our only unknown that we're dealing with is going to be the depth of D, and we don't know how far yet we need to drive that pile in order to reach equilibrium, okay? So uh, what we'll do in the next portion here is we'll talk about force balance below the bottom of the excavation. What we've come to at this point, if I uh, blow this up here and advance a slide, um, what we now have at this point is the active pressure on the, uh, at uh, our reference points B and J and all of our passive pressures at the reference points B and J. And we will, uh, after this point here, in the next lesson, we will talk about how to balance the forces below the excavation, and we'll start with our sum of forces. Okay, hopefully you learned something. Tune in for the next one.